Welcome to Law Class Pro Patch Analysis. In this first episode, Hi from Team Cloud9, our dominant quads from Team Liquid will evaluate the changes for Patch 5.4. Special thanks to DJ Sona for the music. So Jana got nerfed slightly. What Riot did is they moved her bonus move speed, her personal move speed to her W. So now when she casts her W, she obviously loses the bonus, which is all the bonus move speed that she gains just from being Janna. And in return, she has higher base passive move speed um, per level on her W. And for her passive, it only affects champions that are moving toward Janna. So if you're moving um, like slightly behind Janna, you'll get the bonus. But if you're in front of Janna, you won't get any bonus move speed unless you're looking at her. It's just a nerf um, mainly to her W so that um, now she will lose all of her bonus move speed when she casts it. So they decided to give uh, Jarvan a pretty major nerf, seeing as he's the top jungler right now in competitive play and one of the top junglers in solo queue, um, it's understandable why they would um, try to nerf him so hard. Pretty much what they, they did is they gave him three more base armor. So starting the game, you'll have three more base armor, but leveling your E, you just won't gain any bonus armor, which starts at, I think, about 10 and it goes up to 22. So total net loss of armor is going to be about 19 armor late game when you have your Damascian standard maxed. So it's definitely going to hurt his late game potential, but you shouldn't notice it too much early. I mean, he already has some problems clearing, but I, I think it will still be fine. You'll still be able to do your four camps back for your ranges upgrade but it'll just be harder, and if you don't get a leash or you do get chunked at all, you won't be able to do a full clear before you back. So Kalista got a minor nerf to her kiting. Pretty much what happened was her basic attack windup, which is the time between starting the attack and the attack actually going off, speeds up at 66% of her attack speed instead of 100% of her attack speed. So she'll just be able to move around a little bit less in team fights. It's not a major nerf, but I think it will definitely be noticeable, especially early game. And I think that this will be a slight nerf to all the attack speed builds that everyone goes on in Kalista because part of the strength of those builds is when you go an attack speed build on Kalista, you're just it just influences your kiting. You're able to kite so hard. And now it will still influence your kiting, but it will influence it at a smaller rate than before. So the first thing I'm going to talk about is Kassadin. They are decreasing the mana cost on his ultimate to 60 from 75. So that part is a buff to Kassadin. However, they're also changing the range on which he can teleport. So it's currently 700 on live and they're switching it to 450. So that's a massive range nerf and I believe that should be a big enough nerf to be able to kill the bio ability of that champion. Because Kassadin is broken just because of his ultimate. Provides him a lot of gap flows, escape, and mobility. So some of you guys might think that the mana change is enough to let him use his ultimate more. I don't think that's enough to make the difference between 700 range and 450 range. Because it's pretty huge. I think that's enough to kill him, but we'll have to see. So I think casting changes definitely affect his ability to snowball and clean up a fight. The 250 less range on his ulti is definitely going to cut off his mobility choices. And even though in team fights, I think he's going to be similarly strong since usually you just had a spell rotation and then hourglass and chase afterwards. I think overall it's going to be a big nerf and I don't think we'll be seeing much top casting in. I think mid it could still be viable, but definitely not top. So Katarina looks to be getting a minor nerf. Previously getting an assist, you could have done damage maybe like 9 seconds ago and then they die and you still get an assist. So then your skills would reset. And now you have to have done damage to them at least 3 seconds previous. So say for example, you do someone like 500 damage to them, then 6 seconds later they die. You didn't damage them within the last 3 seconds of their death. You don't get the reset anymore. So basically you have to have done damage to them within 3 seconds of their death. Otherwise, you don't get a reset. So it's a little bit of a nerf to Katarina, and I don't really see that many Katarinas anyway, but this might even make people less likely to play Katarina. Mordekaiser changes are definitely going to help him out in terms of his utility and his base strength. I think the, the quality of light changes, for example, on his Q, with the extra 75 range on his auto attack is definitely going to help him out because before a lot of the time you used to have to flash in order to get your Q off on an enemy and now you wouldn't have to do that so it's definitely a big help as well as the W it now works as Nunu's Blood Boil while you, while you can have the 
bonuses on yourself and also on an ally. So you can have two creepy deaths in a team fight, which should add up to a really good amount of AoE damage as well as charging up your shield because of it. So before your enslaved champions gained 75% of Mordekaiser's AP, but that really didn't have much of a use. They didn't benefit from the AP at all. But overall, I think his team fight went up by a lot. But this changes is going to be tankier and it's going to provide more utility. So I think it's going to be a lot better. Uh, Rhaegar had a small change. It's not really a buff or a nerf. Um, pretty much what happened was instead of him having a specialized trinket, the collection of, of trophies is just going to be built into a permanent buff for Rhaegar. So if you have three stacks on your buff, then you'll be able to obviously get the uh, three trophy upgrade for your movement speed, just for an example. So they pretty much uh, said that there was some problems with Trinket upgrade pass because of Rengar's Trinket being different than the other ones. So they just want to make sure that Rengar will still function the same way, but the Trinkets will be different. So Vagar is a little bit different now. Currently his Q is a targeted ability, so it'll hit every single time, assuming you cast on the right person. They're now changing it to be a skill shot. So depending on how fast it goes and how easy it is to hit as a skill shot, determine the viability for him so it can kill a unit and go through the next one now so that's a cool thing but i don't think that's enough to like make him viable because they've nerfed the damage on his ultimate they make his q harder to hit and they got dfg recently those damage should be a lot worse than before and the fact that he has been changed so currently if you like drop it directly on top of him they get stunned instantly but now there's a delay on it so even if you do a good stun like directly on top of him or behind them it's very likely they can still get away from it so with the nerf to his E delay and the fact that his damage is much slower than before, I believe that should kill him as a mid laner and the E nerf is enough to kill him as a support. So it doesn't seem very likely that he'll be a good champion and he seems a lot harder to play. So he'll probably be super weak. Zillion's changes are interesting. They're making his Q a skill shot, so you can't really double cast on anyone anymore for like the quick damage. You kinda have to like throw at them. So I imagine that's super hard to hit, and depending on how hard to hit, it'll determine if the champion is good or bad. But in the case you do land two Qs in a row, you get a stun on them, so that's a pretty big buff for that portion. So on paper he seems better, and he seems more fun at the very least because his Q is not targeted anymore. It's just kind of you throw at people and like you can leave on the ground too. So you can also use it as like a zoning tool. So his Q is a lot more interesting to use. But I don't really see that many zillions right now anyway. He's like barely played. So I don't think this will all of a sudden make him like a better champion or anything. His E change is interesting because it costs less mana and there's a shorter cooldown. And the slow is like much higher. So you can like spam it infinitely for less mana and the slow is bigger but the duration is shorter. So I don't really think zillion got better. I think he got worse. Now when you transition in between jungle items, it's going to cost 255 gold, which essentially just means that no one's going to do it anymore. It's not worth starting with the jungle item and having to pay that huge of an amount of gold to change it. Now you're just going to be stuck with whatever jungle item you start with, which is what they had before. So I guess what happened was they introduced this whole jungle item changing mechanic and they didn't like how effective it was for junglers and they thought the junglers were too strong because of it. So they pretty much tried to remove that from the game which is what the 255 gold cost is going to be. Now, when you start with Rangers for your early clear, you're just going to have to upgrade into Rangers because you're not going to want to spend another extra 255 gold, which is the equivalent of three wards in a competitive game or a pink and two greens to buy a side grade for your item. You'd, you'd either rather buy the Chilling Smite immediately or just not change it at all. So this is essentially just a massive nerf to jungle power. You won't be able to change anymore. And there's some people that would change two or three times during a game, like start with Rangers, then move to Chilling Smite. And then uh, when they upgrade, go to Skirmish or something like that so i think what this is going to do is just essentially make more people buy rangers and just um upgrade their rangers so they decided to nerf warriors too which was a really confusing nerf considering junglers are probably at the weakest state they've ever been in the history of league of legends they're reducing the damage on warrior which is pretty much the enchantment that every jungler goes by five damage with the exception of obviously full tank junglers like nunu or sejuani so you're just gonna have um, five less damage all the time and uh, there's no real point where you're going to gain that damage back, that's just going to be 5 damage less for junglers throughout the whole game. They also nerfed Smite when used against champions. They just wanted it to be shorter, which is pretty confusing considering um, the fact that Chilling Smite or Skirmishers wasn't even the best Smite. 
The best fight was already Rangers, but this nerf will pretty much ensure that no one goes anything besides for Rangers anymore. They pretty much just made it so the hitbox or the, the range worked was instead of it being from the champion's center to the center of the opponent's hitbox, it's the edge of your champion hitbox to the edge of the opponent's hitbox. So it is like a slightly shorter range, so you just won't be able to smite people um, as far away. It seems like they just don't want chilling smite or skirmishes in the game. I guess they just didn't like the idea of smiting champions in general, so they decided to remove it essentially and just have everyone go rangers and have a more standard game. Thanks for watching Pro Patch Analysis. If you have any suggestions or feedback, please leave it in the comments below. Be sure to check out our pro video guides for free at lawclass.com.